Well, it's official. We're leaving Colombia and we're on our way to Aruba. It's probably going to be a rough sail. It's probably going to kick our butts, but we're excited for it. We're pumped to be going to the ABC Islands and really our first proper stop in the Caribbean. Um, we're leaving South America, we're leaving the Central America, we're leaving USA and Mexico behind and we're off to the Caribbean. We're excited, we're pumped and the wind is really picking up so Against it's going to be us. exciting. <laughs> it's, it's picking up in the wrong direction. Yeah, it is. But we've checked out of Colombia, we've got our passports stamped and it's time to go. We're leaving just a few minutes ahead of our buddy boat Dark Horse that's behind us. We also need to get going because there's a big container ship coming into the port. You can see the port behind us and the container ship is over that way and we're going straight across. Just got enough time though and we want to get out there before the winds hopefully pick up even more. It's already 15 knots on the nose, eh? Yeah, it's, it's strong. But we've got our radar on, we're going to be watching out for storms. We've got our AIS on, our autopilot pilot's working well. Uh, we got our adult pants on. We do. Let's We've got do our this. sailing shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we need to put our life jackets on. Yeah. Okay, 10-4, on our way back. So our buddy boat, Dark Horse, has a, a slight issue with his windlass. So we're going to... Uh, uh, I'm moving into deeper water so I can... Then I'll snag him again. I don't know if you heard that. Moving into deeper water. But we're going to turn around and give him a hand. have the upper body strength to pull it the rest of the way up. There's only about five meters of chain out there. Why, thank you. I have been eating my Wheaties lately. Um, okay, we'll re-anchor. It's going to take us a second to uh, uh, untie the dinghy, but we'll uh, head over there. All right, thanks a lot, guys. No problem. Supernova standing by on channel 680. It's almost like I know how to talk on the radio. I don't, like, at all. Like, it's terrifying. <laughs> uh, back to Colombia we go. <laughs> it hasn't been long, my friend. It hasn't been long. Get some beers. <laughs> <laughs> came back for nothing. If you tell us we came back for nothing, there's going to be a war. <laughs> no. I'm just thinking that if my, if my windlass is out of service, there's no way I can leave. I can drop the anchor, but I can't retrieve it. And I'm thinking maybe you guys go on ahead. I anchor here, go find a mechanic to help me uh, repair this damn thing. I think that's a terrible idea. I think we should get that up. It's only five more meters. And then you can drop the anchor in Aruba and we can deal with it then uh, under calmer weather and everything like that, better anchorage and probably better people to help fix it. All right, I was just thinking if we have to bail out into uh, Bahia Honda, then we'll have to, you know, raise it by hand. But if we don't have to do that, then you might be right, Aruba would be our next stop. Yeah, if you have to raise it by hand or whatever, uh, like I said, I've been eating my Wheaties, so we'll give you a hand. We'll make sure your anchor's up first. We're not gonna abandon you on this two-boat trip to Aruba. I copy that. All right, well, um, go ahead and do what you need to do there, and then um, I'll be standing by waiting for you. Thank you. 10-4, sending muscle over in T-minus five minutes. That's me! Okay, let's drop the anchor down, let's get over there and get that anchor back up and then get our anchor back up and let's get over to Aruba! Arua! I'm excited to go. <laughs> okay, we've decided to take the stand-up paddleboard rather than the dinghy because we had 
strapped down the dinghy four ways from Sunday <laughs> and we anchored right near Dark Horse. So off you go, good luck. While Darcy and Brian are fixing that issue, I noticed that our underwater speed isn't working, so I'm gonna go put togs on quickly. And as soon as Darcy gets back, I'll jump in the water, spin our little underwater speed dial around, give it a quick clean, and then jump back on, and then we'll be out of Columbia. <laughs> Always something, isn't there? So this counts as me technically sailing on two boats on the passage from Aruba or from uh, Columbia to Aruba. <laughs> I wish I had those muscles like he does. <laughs> he's he's only being nice because I helped. No, I'm kidding. He's nice all the time. <laughs> How'd it go? Success. Anchor's tied up. All right, we were drifting, so I turned the motor on and moved us. We don't have any in-water speed, and since I did that, someone's been nominated to go in and uh, spin the little in-water speed wheel. And it's not me! <laughs> All right, you get on here and we'll do this quick. These tugboats are looking at us. Funny. <laughs> bon voyage! <laughs> Oh, she did the swim underwater thing. So she's spinning it, and that's why you're seeing that move now. Good job. It's spinning. Shall we uh, get this sail underway? Yeah, take two. Cedar plug going on. Apparently there's some big tuna out here. have a big meal before we left and have all this food prepped and put away in the fridge ready to heat up and eat but we didn't have much breakfast this morning because we were rushing around we skipped lunch because we were taking off and then coming back and we didn't take any time to prepare any dinners so <laughs> this has gone off to a great start Hoorah! <laughs> Yvette's going to bed, so it's all me. Uh, we have a, a true wind of about 17 knots, an apparent wind of about 21, 22 knots. It's gonna be a rough night. It's gonna be a rough passage. Uh, I don't know how you're planning to sleep, but. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Yeah, so it's about 4.30, 5 o'clock-ish right now. I'll be on shift until two o'clock in the morning. And then I don't really know how I'm planning to sleep, but we'll, we'll get her done. Ryan's just right beside us there. We're going to get a little bit more distance from him as the sun goes down and we've stopped fishing. We didn't catch anything, but uh, we're going to have four lines out tomorrow. So hopefully our luck will change. Anyway, night night. Good night. Not, well, not me, you. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got really woken up by the alarm that goes off when the engines just turn off by themselves um, and you haven't t turned the key off. Um, that alarm is actually just right behind the bed. So I woke up by that, ran up, the engine's going off, alarms are going off. Darcy's just run in because he's heard the alarm as well and that the engines are turned off. 
and we're just floating around now getting knocked around by the waves and the wind um, run out um, turn the alarm off run out pull the jib out Darcy pulls it out I unlock the furling line so the furling line can run jib comes out we get steerage turn us to a good point of sail put the autopilot on that go inside we pretty much assume that it's the fuel um, because both engines have gone off pretty much at the same time which is exactly what happens when something blocks the fuel pickup line and then therefore both fuels stop getting fuel and so that's the line that comes straight from the tank before the line split off to each engine and we do want to change that so that it doesn't then affect both lines we also want to put in a massive line so it's not so thin how'd it go Oh, what do you mean how it went? <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. It's not like, it's not like our engines just stopped working. Um, now, I bet was a champ. She came up right away when she heard it. And um, yeah, now it's all fixed. Uh, so we're just going to turn the engines back on because it's all fixed for sure, 100%. <laughs> and we should be good to go. And then we'll wrap up the sail because we're not really going in the right direction. And no, we'll, we're not going in the right direction at all. <laughs> we'll start motoring ahead. Thank you, Wrangle, Alaska. <laughs> we will deal with this properly one day. There's a sail out. We've just got the jib out. Uh, and that sounds like an engine. Are these in neutral? That wasn't scary at all. The port engine wasn't starting because she was in neutral, or she wasn't in neutral, and then it was too much of a starter. Yeah, it's really hard to tell whether our gears are in neutral. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get this uh, head sail wrapped up, yeah? Yeah, so that we can point in the right direction. As you can see, we're pointing up that way towards north and we want to be following that pink line. So let's get turned around, back on path. All right, let's do this. Oh, the sail jammed. I think the halyard was too loose. Uh, we have a fairly new halyard for the jib, our Genoa. And so it wasn't letting the sail wrap up. So we tried to wrap it up like five or six times. I went forward, I couldn't figure it out. Uh, and then I figured it, it, it had to have been the halyard being not tight enough. And, I got lucky and I was right, so we tightened up the halyard and we just got the sail all the way wrapped up. But man, that sucked, because I thought we were going to be out here with a, like half of a, a jib for the rest of this sail, which wouldn't have happened. <laughs> anyway, what are you doing up? Go back to sleep. Yeah, we need to turn back to the right course too. <laughs> okay, let's do that. And thank goodness both our engines are working again. Oh. Oh. So I'm up again. I got woken up by the buzzer again. So it's the low oil pressure buzzer. That's what it is. And it sounded, normally it was both engines. Last time it was both engines when this happens. Um, but it was just the port engine. Starboard engine kept running. So then we know that it's something clogging the fuel line on the port engine only. It's not the filter clogging or anything like that. It's something in the actual fuel line. So Darcy went down, we pulled out the jib again. Um, Darcy went down and this time sucked on the fuel line to unclog it and get muck out. With, with the pump, not with my mouth. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine it. <laughs> um, yeah, so last time we pushed it back through the main pickup line into the fuel tank. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it, but because it was just on one engine, just suck it out. Um, and then we've got the jib still out, so we're motor sailing. We've just left the port engine off for now. 
The wind is dying a bit though, so we're not sure how long we can motor sail. And we've just changed directions slightly, um, but sailing at like 45 degrees to starboard. But we're definitely gonna have to just bite the bullet and cut into the, the cockpit floor, the fiberglass, and then into the tank to try and get the chunks of stuff out that are blocking the fuel line and the, um, yeah, the, the fuel lines. Yeah, I concur. Um, it's not really safe to be out here and having engines dying. Like, yeah, we could get uh, a sail out. Uh, this time it was only the one engine, but it is ridiculous. And you're a lot faster at fixing the problem compared to when it very first happened in Alaska? Yeah, yeah, I can fix it super quickly, but it's dumb. And it's like, every once in a while we'll get like a wood chip out or like a glob of caulking out or something. So we got really, really bad fuel in Wrangell, Alaska. Wrangell, Alaska. And so uh, we just, we have to cut into the tank because there's probably a bunch of wood, a bunch of globs of caulking, a bunch of other stuff in there. So yeah, we've pulled out chunks of stuff before. Yeah. Like silicon and S silicone, wood, all that kind of stuff we pulled out of our fuel lines. And so we know there's more in there. So this is on us. We shouldn't be technically really out here with this issue just because we're fast at fixing it. It doesn't really make it okay. So that's a stupid decision that we made. Um, but uh, we will be ordering parts uh, so we can fix this situation post haste. Uh, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess you probably want to go back to sleep. Uh, yes, I do. I've been working up twice now and it takes a very 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 long time to be like to fall asleep when it's so rocky and there's bridge deck slamming um but luckily for me that's like my superpower is that i can fall asleep pretty well in any conditions even last night when we were at anchor the wind picked up crazy crazy fast everyone was talking about it when we went back to the marina brian darcy everyone and i slept through the whole thing so actually it wouldn't be very safe if i was the only one i don't think out here <laughs> because I literally could sleep through anything. So yeah, I'm going back to sleep. All right. Woo. This is a really, really rough passage. Every like five minutes we get hit by like a monster wave. Been in touch with Brian and uh, he said the same thing. He's getting some big waves. He's a bit closer to shore. He's uh, uh, still trying to find a comfortable track, but got huge news. We just hit 20,000 subscribers. Yay. But I would give it all up for engines that didn't clog. <laughs> but seriously, thanks a lot everyone who subscribed, uh, everyone who enjoys watching the videos. Uh, just, we love making them and it's super cool that you guys like watching them. So uh, yeah, cool. We'll make it through this passage. I mean, we have no choice. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, we'll uh, celebrate properly. I'm gonna not wake Yvette up because more than likely, uh, she's gonna have to get up to help me fix something. So, and then I'll tell her when she's up. But thanks a lot, woohoo! We're traveling at about six-ish knots, a uh, little bit over, a little bit under sometimes. Um, and it's kind of rocky. Uh, the apparent wind is about 20 knots and the true wind's about 14, 15 knots. So, I mean, it kind of is what it is. I think it's just gonna be a washing machine for the next couple days, so looking forward to, uh, I guess, the experience. It's four o'clock, my shift was supposed to end at two o'clock, but I had to wake Yvette uh, up a bunch of times, so um, I figured I'd let her sleep until I was ready to go to sleep, and I'm kind of just getting really tired now. Uh, kind of just all hit me at once, so I went and woke her up, and so she'll be coming up. We're gonna do our handover, our checklists and then I'm gonna get a chance to go to sleep hopefully for at least uh, eight hours ish depending probably gonna have to wake up at some point if she needs a hand with something but other than that uh, we usually do 12 hour shifts and they get adjusted uh, depending on weather so um, but she's had a big sleep uh, she went to sleep at around I think 5 30 and it's now four o'clock so with a couple of disturbances so she'll be good for a while and I'll be able to get some good rest unless something goes wrong, when something goes wrong. Good morning, I'm on watch now. Uh, it's 4 a.m. so Darcy gave me a fair bit more extra sleep because I got woken up three times. 
but I actually got quite a good sleep, especially that last time when I went to sleep because there was a little bit less slamming and that's the main thing that stops me sleeping because it's so loud. But um, the rocking and rolling, I'm not too bad with. I sleep as soon as I, once I get to sleep, then I, I'm pretty good to stay, stay asleep. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna make some tea and brekkie now, hopefully, um, without spilling anything. The whole kitchen pretty much has pretty much has fallen to the ground. The kettle is safe though, so that's one good thing. Um, and the blender is safe, but everything else pretty much has fallen to the ground. One of the times where we lost the engines, uh, and so we lost steerage, and we were really like beam to the waves, I think, and just really getting knocked knocked around. So neither of us have touched that. We've just left it on the ground, and I think we'll deal with that when it gets calmer, which will probably be when we get to Aruba. I think at this point but yeah I'm excited for the sun to come up and see where we're at and maybe it will calm down a little bit it's supposed to according to the forecast but we'll have to wait and see I think once we get up to the very very tip and make the turn around the top of Columbia that's the infamous part where it's supposed to get really really rough if it does um, but we're hoping for that kind of 24 hour window of total calmness so fingers crossed It's calmed down just very slightly. I'm listening to a podcast. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a cup of tea. And the sun, it's not up, but it is coming up and it's lit up the entire sky ahead of me in just this beautiful orange and pink. Have a look. Pretty beautiful, right? This is what it's all about. And yeah, it's still a little bit hobby horsey up and down because we are going straight into the waves and the wind. The wind is, true wind is 10, um, so apparent about 15. Brian in, on Dark Horse is behind us about five miles. Um, yeah, we are still a fair way from the tip of Columbia, so where that kind of iffy bit might be, a little bit rough, we'll see. I'm gonna enjoy this sunrise though. So the engines just start again, just the port one, the starboard one's all right. Hey Darcy, <laughs> Darcy's just woken up, hear the oil uh, how's it called? Oil pressure buzzer going off? Yay! <laughs> I'm gonna uh, go fix the thing now. Yeah, go fix that. The starboard one's fine though, so there's obviously something in the port fuel line only now, rather than the pickup line, which is good because it means we still keep steerage with the starboard engine going. Um, we've got the wind right on the nose at the moment and only 10 knots, so um, yeah, the, the wave has really calmed down compared to what it was before, but this fuel thing is not ideal at all. So I'll be happy to get to Aruba. Okay, this is the third time this has happened. So I'm gonna disconnect this fuel line right here. And then I'm gonna use my pump to, uh, to pump it out. And the other engine is working right now. So it's just this engine that is is blocked so something's in this fuel line so this is a little pump that is supposed to get uh, fuel filling up the filter and then you pump it until you see it spurt out of right here There you go, let's pop it out of there. Put 
this plug back on and then we should be able to fire up the engine. We're running off of a jerry can right now on the port engine. So I'll go downstairs and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna try one more fix to the fuel line. And if it doesn't work, then we're probably just gonna run off of jerry cans on that side and then undo the block uh, when we get to Aruba because it'll be a bit more less of a washing machine so uh, but that means that we would have to uh, bring at least six or seven jerry cans from the front of the boat uh, we only left with two jerry cans in the cockpit so uh, i'll have to go forward uh, if i can't fix it but of course i'll be tied off and everything but anyway i'll show you what it looks like so there's the jerry can and right here is where the fuel filter is so this line here just goes up it's taped so it doesn't fall and it goes right to the jerry can and uh we're getting about four hours ish um a little bit more than four hours out of uh, a single jerry can so that means we'd need about seven or eight jerry cans for the remainder of the trip so we're going to try a different method now to try and unplug that port fuel line now that we've got it running off the jerry can we're going to turn off the starboard engine and then we have that port engine line free to try and suck out whatever's clogging it. And so because uh, the fuel lines are connected after they leave the fuel tank, if the port line is clogged and I'm trying to unclog it by sucking something through with the, the vacuum tool that I have, uh, it'll just uh, be fighting against me because the starboard line is also trying to suck stuff down to the engine fuel. So. Uh, hopefully it's going to work, but we need to go down one engine for it. So let's do it. Hey, hey. see that? Pumping fuel. That means we cleared the line. That also means we could have done this earlier if I had rigged up the jerry can and then not gone to sleep. Um, and then I would have slept more peacefully. I also don't know if you can see me taking a shower right now, but it is so hot down here. Anyway, that line's clear. We're not sure how long it's gonna stay clear for. I'm probably gonna pump a little bit more fuel out of here. Uh, just to make sure if there's any clog, I get it as far down as possible. But hey, that's good. That means I don't have to carry as many jerry cans down. I'm probably still going to go forward and get jerry cans because it's calm right now. Uh, and just in case this happens again, we want to have enough to get home. I guess Aruba's home now. <laughs> so the port engine just started again. Southern one's been a champ, so that's good. Thank God we have two engines. Uh, but there's definitely something stuck in the port uh, fuel line. Probably whatever was stuck in the fuel pickup line went down the fuel line on the port side now. And that's why ever since the first one where both died ever since then, it's only been the port engine. So anyway, our plan now is to get six jerry cans from the front, bring them down here so that we can run the port engine off jerry cans. Um, the reason we want to run both engines is because we only have a small window um, where the weather kind of seems to break to let us through to get to Aruba without the wind absolutely pummeling us against us. So we really want to kind of go a little bit faster than we go with just the one engine on. So off you go to the front and get the jerry cans. Hi, hi, Captain. <laughs> How you feeling? A little bit seasick. A little, little rough? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, hold in there, champ.
Right, two out of six. Cargo ship. So there's a cargo ship coming past us. We were actually on a uh, direct path to hit each other um, and it didn't look like it was moving so as soon as I kind of saw it and realised I pointed about between 5 and 10 degrees to starboard and changed port. Um, but they go so fast that even by the time you do that we're going quite slow and we get out of its way. By the time it's at where you are um, you're about a, only a few miles away. I think it's about two miles away where it is now. But yeah, out of after seeing no one out here except knowing our buddy boat's just behind us, um, yeah, it's, it's quite close to be that you know two miles away. Anyway, the wind is picking up. We, the waves are picking up, and we're running off the jerry cans. At least that's working for us for now. And time for me to get some sleep soon. So it's our second night and we thought it was going to be our last but looking at the current at the moment it's definitely going to take us longer than we expected and probably into our third night. The current at the moment is between like one and two knots so stronger than we expected and what was kind of predicted which is one was around more like one knot. It's been up to over two knots and now it's gone down to about one and a half knots so for example our water speed is around six and the actual speed we're going is four and a half and before like an hour ago it got down to we were going under four knots so like three and a half knots even though our water speed was six so um a very strong current that we're going into at the moment and it's going to be from now all the way up until we get to aruba and we did know that we were going to be going against the current but it just wasn't going to be this strong but Thankfully one thing is going for us, that's that the wind and the waves are relatively calm. Uh, this is the notorious compression zone, that northern part of Colombia that can get quite wild. And so we're very, very relieved that the predictions have been pretty correct, that it's relatively calm at the moment. Uh, the wind is only 10 knots and yeah, the waves are pretty, pretty calm. We're going into them at the moment, so bashing and um, it's actually been the calmest the whole trip has been so far, so that's great. The whole trip from uh, Santa Marta, not from Vancouver. <laughs> There's been calmer days than this. So in terms of the port engine, I am putting about half a jerry can worth of fuel into the jerry can that is staying there and feeding the port engine at the moment. So about every two hours I'm going down pouring half a jerry can into that main jerry can that the fuel line is just sticking in and so we're just going to continue that pretty much for the rest of the trip so that we can run that port engine because going against the current like this we would really be quite slow without running both engines and we're keen to make it to Aruba get through this weather window that is only very narrow so if we go too slow then the seas will pick up quite a lot so at the moment I've got all my jerry cans waiting for me just down here and then I go downstairs and pour in the jerry can into the main one and just got an alarm on every couple of hours. And otherwise, all is well up here. Darcy's gone to sleep. Uh, I'll be waiting for the sunrise very shortly. On the radar I can see some squalls ahead and so I'm going to try and dodge them a little bit but I think we might get a bit of rain because they're kind of on both sides a bit hard to dodge they're quite large 
I can see them on the radar and now that the sun is just starting to get up, it hasn't gone over the horizon yet, but it's lit up the sky. I can also see the squalls or the clouds ahead and the rain coming down from them. So I think I need to fatten down the hatches a little bit. And yep, there it is. It's just started raining. Just had a nice rain shower and a burst of wind, but that's all moved off to the port side now. And straight ahead is pretty nice and clear. Some beautiful clouds with the sun poking out behind them. And I'm pretty happy that this is the treacherous part of the trip that we've been quite anxious about. And it's actually beautiful out here. I guess that's the important thing about watching the weather so closely. And the, it, it's really paid off, I guess, because this we knew we only had a very tight window and we tried to time it with this area and it was pretty rough getting here. But this bit could have been way worse and really, really rough, but it's it's just really nice. It's beautiful out here. It's just, oh, it's a nice feeling and it's a very uh, feeling of relief, I think. So I'm just gonna enjoy this sunrise, make some brekkie and maybe give my friend on Dark Horse a ring, or a radio, I should say. There's a lot of chatter going on on the radio. <laughs> I can't understand it. But there's no boats around on AIS and I can't see any on the radar. We are going past Venezuela at the moment. So we're keeping a bit of an eye out for any boats or anything coming close. I just got up, put the fishing line out and I noticed when I was putting the fishing line out that at the hull deck joint, um, I think that's what it's called, uh, we have like a white coping and that's been ripped off. So I'm trying to save it before it gets completely ripped off. I think we need to get a rope around it and hold it up, but I think we need a second set of hands for that. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and then, uh, hold on, stop. You're gonna have to walk all the way to the front, but hold on, yeah. you can use a lot more line on the short side, pull a lot more through, help you. Watch your toes. Okay, keep going. Yvette's just up there in the front of the deck, securing it to the side. Good job, Fort Ant crew. Yeah, High thanks. five. At least we didn't lose it. Yeah, that would have been expensive. Yeah. I was wondering what that slapping was. I looked everywhere on the boat. Did you? Yeah. Oh. No! Oh. 
Lost it. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. It was the perfect size eating fish. Yeah. Woohoo! Fish on! Looks like a yellow fin. Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah, we caught a fish! Another fish on! Oh gosh! I haven't even finished cleaning this one yet. Got one on the hand line now. We haven't caught fish in so long. And Coco ate almost all of our fish. Who am I kidding? She ate all of our fish. She's gonna love all this. Another fish on! Woohoo! I can't keep up. Holy moly, this one's bigger. I think. I can see it. Whew. All right, we got another one on the line, but it's a, it's a bonito. Bonita, bonito. Correct me for the 50th time, please. Uh, we're gonna throw it back because it's not our kind of choice fish and we have enough yellowfin already to uh, to feed uh, Coco, so she doesn't eat, eat bonita. <laughs> nice clean catch and release. Oh man, it is tiring out here, but this is a great day. Sure is. This is supposed to be like one of the waviest parts too. Yeah, it is. And it's a beautiful day. <laughs> So that was 10 minutes of absolute mayhem. This is exactly what happened last time where we had four lines out and we just caught a bunch of fish all at the same time pretty much. So it's obviously when you just go through a school of the fish, that's when you catch them. And if you don't go over them like we haven't for months now, then you get nothing. So we're gonna stock up while, while we can. We're gonna turn on our spare freezer. We're gonna cut it all up, freeze it in the special, what are they called? Uh, freezers. <laughs> I mean like the, the zip Oh, uh, vacuum. a vacuum seal. Vacuum seal bag. And we're especially going to save them for our beautiful cat, Coconut, who's coming back in the beginning of December. And she's going to be very happy with this. Woohoo! That's going to be a lot of work. It is. We're going to enjoy some as well ourselves. Oh, well, that was a big day. I've been cutting them all up and we've put heaps and heaps and heaps in one of the freezers. And so Coconut's going to be very happy when she joins the boat, and so are we. <laughs> uh, so is Brian, because when we get to Aruba tomorrow, or tonight, whatever time it ends up being, uh, we're going to have a big feast of tuna. So we're keeping some out for that, these ones probably. And then right now we're going to have these leftover bits for lunch, cook up some rice or something to put with it, and enjoy maybe a sunset. <laughs> Woo! Epic day. It has been. Great job cleaning all those fish, hon. Thanks. We're pretty sure we have enough jerry cans just to get to Aruba already in the cockpit, but because the weather's starting to get a little bit worse and we're starting to slow down a bit, I'm gonna go grab one more jerry can just to make sure we're 100% safe and there's no point in needing it at, you know, 10 o'clock at night and then going to grab it then when the weather's completely gone to crap. So, tied off. I feel much better with that back in the cockpit now. We 100% have enough fuel 
to burn both engines all the way to Aruba now. So let's eat some tuna. I had a quick shower on the back deck and then cooked up this tuna teriyaki for us to have for dinner. And now it's just starting to get rough. So we've pulled in the lines and we've got about 40 miles to go. And it's probably gonna get really, really rough. So we're gonna have our butts handed to us for the rest of the way. But at least we'll have a full stomach. <laughs> that looks delicious, hon. Thank you. Love me. But this weather does not look delicious. It doesn't, but <laughs> at least we had a really nice day. Yeah, we did. Taste it, taste it. Yeah. How is it? Mm. It's good? So Cooked good. all the way through? Mm -hmm. Just the way we do it here on Supernova. <laughs> we thought we were going to get there sometime today, initially. And then I thought we were going to take the whole night to get there and end up taking three nights. And now the current has dropped down a bit again. So we are going to get there later on tonight, maybe 11, 12 p.m. midnight. So I'm going to go get a bit of a rest, a bit of a nap in, and then I'll wake up again before we arrive. And it is quite bouncy, but this girl sleeps through anything. I actually like it when it's just this because uh, it's like rocking me to sleep. <laughs> and then I get to watch that lovely sunset by myself, all by my lonesome. I'll miss you, sweetie. <laughs> Good night. We're still going into a headwind. Uh, we have uh, just under 30 miles left to go. And we're going about about five knots, a bit under five knots, because we're going into the headwind and the waves and, and the current still. This has definitely been a, a little bit more of a challenging passage, I guess, than we're used to, but it's been really good. We were able to kind of test our metal a little bit, uh, test out the boat a little bit more. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been an absolute blast. Uh, like every passage, it's kind of almost sad that it's ending. Uh, the last day has been phenomenal. We tried to time everything for a tiny little weather window. We thought we were going to get like 12 hours. And it, we got a bit more than 12 hours, maybe 14 hours uh, of really good weather. And that was right at the compression zone point. So that was perfect. Uh, and now we're almost in the lee of the island. Just a little bit longer to go. I don't know. Just... I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, Colombia to Aruba. That's just phenomenal. It's, it's, it's still pretty wavy out. Um, maybe not in the lee of the island yet, but soon. Soon. Uh, it's just great. We are 0.5 miles away and there's a wind of about 21 knots, which isn't great. Uh, we're going to call the uh, Aruba Port Authority now and hopefully they're going to tell us where to go. It's like 12 o'clock midnight, so there's no checking in or anything right now, but uh, there goes nothing. Aruba Port Authority, Aruba Port Authority, Aruba Port Authority. This is Sailing Vessel Supernova, Sailing Vessel Supernova. Do you have a copy? Good evening again, sir. I report to Joe. I'd like to go ahead. Hi, we are just arriving at the uh, Barcedira entrance uh, where the custom immigration dock is. Um, and uh, we would like to know if you would like to us to tie up at that dock. We are arriving from Colombia. Negative, Captain. They're closed at this uh, time of the night. Okay, 10 4. Can we anchor just uh, if, as long as we're outside of the channel there, um, just a little ways off of the dock? Okay, Captain. Yeah. We can uh, anchor so long you're not in the channel because at 6 o'clock or whatever. Okay, 10-4. Uh, we will anchor outside of the channel and uh, we will go to the dock in the morning. And uh, do we call you before we head to the dock? Yes, we will. Okay, 10-4. Uh, we'll be flying our Q flag and uh, uh, we'll uh, make sure we're out of the way. Thank you very much. Supernova standing by on channel 1-6. Well, looks like we can just go in and anchor. Um, as long as we're outside of the uh, scary area. <laughs> <laughs>
There's um, a channel where all the cargo ships and everything come in. It's the same entrance to where we're supposed to go to the dock in the morning. Yeah, so we're just gonna head there in this crazy wind. I guess uh, it's supposed to not be as rolly at some point. Uh, we got a bunch of water coming in uh, the cockpit, uh, splashing over the bow. That's why we have this, but it's hard to see. So I'd like to roll this up and, uh, and be able to see, but that is not an option for me right now. Not a fun option anyway. No. <laughs> not a dry option. Welcome to Aruba. <laughs> We're so happy and relieved to be here. We've just anchored outside the area where we need to go actually a dock tomorrow morning and go to customs and immigration and then we'll be formally checked in and then we can go anchor at a different spot. We're the only boat here and it's also the area where there's a main channel and the cargo ships and everything come. So we've anchored well away from that and we're just gonna wait for daylight and then head in and get checked into a river. So yeah, we're super excited to be here and I can't wait to look around tomorrow. <laughs> it is now 8 30 in the morning it is blowing at like 17 knots and the wind is blowing us off the dock so i don't know this is going to be tricky uh we're not that great at docking when the wind's blowing us off the dock so oh man <laughs> aruba I have a better check-in procedure <laughs> um anyway we're gonna head to the uh check-in dock now and hopefully everything's gonna go well I'm not nervous. You're nervous. Stop being nervous. You're freaking me out, all right? <laughs> that was absolutely terrifying and it went very, very well. Yeah. But terrifying. Thankfully, people came from the dock, which we weren't sure was gonna happen because sometimes there's no one. But we got two people catching our lines, super windy, but we made it. Hey. Not too close to that boat, duck. Going too close unless you're turning. Are you turning? Are you turning? Um. Yeah. Why don't you just keep backing out? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> but you said you'd catch We're going downwind to get to our anchorage, Aranjastad. 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 And uh, we can't believe it. Downwind, like with, with the waves, it's so comfy. Yeah, we've oh. been downwind for a while now and it's so different. <laughs> this is glorious. Uh, so the check-in process was pretty smooth, pretty quick. The dock is terrifying. Don't suggest it, don't recommend it, wouldn't do it again. But once you docked, <laughs> then it was fine. Yeah, uh, getting off the dock was nerve wracking just because we're not that good. Uh, but yeah, now we're happy to be here. We had to hand in our spear guns. Uh, you're not allowed to have spear guns here. So when we check out of Aruba, we have to remember to pick them back up. Um, it's not a big deal because you have to check out of the exact same place you checked in. And you have to go back to the dock. So it's not yeah. any extra work to tell them and give them our spear guns. Yeah, but aside from that, uh, let's just get to our line. Aranjastad? Aranjastad. Aranjastad Anchorage. And uh, get anchored and, poof, man. It's uh, looking forward to uh, a nice meal. I'm looking forward to a swim in that turquoise water. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of that sunscreen in our future. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice warm day. Nice and breezy, though, so it's good. Water looks nice and we've seen people jumping in off their boat already, so we're keen for a swim. But first, we definitely need to go get some food because we didn't really prep food very well on this passage and we're both starving. I think what Yvette is trying to say is we did an awful job of prepping food <laughs> and we did an awful job of buying food. This is the most prep time we've ever had before taking like a passage. And we've, we just, I don't even know what we did. I don't even know what food we got 
all of it was useless. We had cheese sandwiches. We caught that tuna and we had one really good meal. And that was, was the one good meal yeah, of the trip. And, that <laughs> and was the rest it. was just snacks and things. Yeah. So, but that doesn't matter now because we we're in Aruba. In Aruba and we're gonna go get yummy food and explore and enjoy ourselves. Yay. And then probably a lot of sleep. <laughs> yeah, all the sleep. <laughs> Although I love the 12 hour shifts. They work well. Yeah, perfect. We made land a bottle with some, uh, and it looks like paradise. So this is what happens when you don't eat for two days. <laughs> There's more coming. <laughs> the last thing we're going to do today, apart from make water, which we've quickly done. Um, and yeah, don't worry about that mess behind me. We're going to clean that up tomorrow. But the last thing we absolutely have to do before we go to sleep is jump in the water. It looks so beautiful. And it is like 3.30. And yes, we are talking about going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> We're a little bit tired. <laughs> Aruba! Oh. Paradise. We are so happy to be in Aruba. We broke heaps of things sailing here, and in the next Patreon-only video, we are going to go over everything we broke and how we fixed it, or plan to fix it. If you're interested in that, then check out our Patreon. Remember to like and subscribe if you liked the video, and a huge thanks to our Patreons who help make these videos better. See you next Friday.